Then we then a humeral joint. We're gonna uh, have pain in this a lot. Like the guys who come in here, um, or girls, uh, are gonna be like, my shoulder hurts. And a lot of times it has to do with a glenohumeral dysfunction. Um, Intranocturnal impingement, uh, cuff strain or tears or whatever, and those are glenohumeral problems. Um, but they're usually not the thing that's wrong. They're the top hinge, while the other two are missing, okay? Um, just a quick view, you guys, this is, you know, first year stuff, right? <laughs> All right, so here's the, another analogy I like to use because kids love to think that they're just a beast. Even older guys are like, oh, yeah, I'm a sports car. Um, Ferrari, okay? A lot of room to stop that thing and moving at a pedestrian 90 miles an hour. You got going very fast. You got lots of room to stop. This car stops 60 to zero in 115 feet, oh, 17 feet. Those numbers are taken directly from Ferrari. Don't quote me. <laughs> I'm sure somebody would have said, I didn't slap my sword. Uh, you're not gonna hit this. You could probably do this trip many times. So someone who's not really a thrower can do this and they'll come to you and they'll, you're non-throwing people who have shoulder pain who have 90 degrees and 105 and you're like, oh, great. And they have no pain and they'll have 70 degrees of internal rotation and it'll be fine too. So their problem is not gonna be a thrower's problem. It's gonna be something else, which is fine. Your, thr your throwers are moving fast. They're accelerating that arm. Problem is, if you've, uh, if you've seen it, you, you notice GIRD, G-I-R-D, glenohumeral internal rotation deficit. And it's anything that's, uh, any relationship of internal rotation on one side to the other that shows a larger than 30% decrease. So you've got 105 and 70 on the left side, the non-dominant side, and then it's 125 and 30. And that is very typical. I can almost bet that every thrower with pain has got some of this and subsequent other impingements and things. But here's what they're doing. They're accelerating the speed, this sports car fast and they're not giving it a lot of room to stop. So on its best day, this thing takes 117 feet to stop. I think not, that's not gonna stop, okay? You better have good brakes. What does that mean for the glenohumeral joint in that range of motion? Eccentric external rotators, infrontaries, okay? maybe posterior delt, whatever. But you're not, you're not gonna do this very often. This is a big time movement econ problem. A task that requires a lot of movement econ and you don't have it. I mean, you're, there's not many times you're gonna do this. So guys come in with, oh, my shoulder hurts. So my shoulder hurts in the front. That's actually a typical one with uh, inferentaries. It hurts here. And you go, biceps tendonitis, I'm, so, I'm brilliant. And you feel the biceps, and, oh, it's so tender, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm so smart. And you treat biceps and fine and they still have this pain in the front. And you go, well, why do you have this pain when you throw? It doesn't make any sense. And you palpate inferentaries and you hit those trigger points and it's like, oh my God, it feels like you're stabbing me in my arm. And actually, it's really pronounced when you use a needle back there. <laughs> They're like, it literally feels like you're stabbing me in the front of the arm. Um, so you fix that. You recondition the brakes, buy them a little more runway, and then they're usually better. Usually. So that's a sports car dilemma in like nerd terms. Here's your range of motion. Cool picture. You guys all have it. We are, we are, as coaches, real excited sometimes about this. Not so much about the range, but like this, now you know what this means. It means hand speed, ball speed, power, 90 miles an hour. But you forget about the brakes. Look at how fast your car is. If you don't have a brake stop in it, you're not gonna stop it often. You're gonna stop it once against the wall, okay? So how much running do we have? That's the end product when you don't have enough. Every time the elite thrower throws with not enough internal rotation, they do this to their arm. Every time. What happens when these tissues get trauma again and again and again and again? What happens? Does that runway become longer or shorter? Way shorter. Disorganized healing, just ice, don't move it. Okay, don't move it, even better. Gonna get shorter. All this is gonna be bad. Uh, wait, we can advocate for our patients. We can say, hey, let me teach you what's going on. Use the sports car thing. Because if you just teach them about glutamine internal rotation, they're going to, I'm going to go to see my trainer. He'll, he'll fix it. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's your, oh, good, quiz time. So, a really neat picture of the glutamine joint. The sits muscles are the glutamine muscles. There are no others. Everything else is scapular thoracic. We're going to talk about that. You're going to treat this a little differently. They're going to send pain in plenty of places. What are you gonna do? You wanna see, does it move up, down, forward, back? If not, there'll be other problems. And so you'll someone will come in with a problem 
it hurts when I do this, it gives you an idea, okay, well, where might not, where, where does the shoulder not go? Where does the head of the humerus not go? Other things to differential, okay? Labrum, biceps, AC joint, rotator cuff. And then internal versus external impingement. You're gonna get scripts a lot, new people. It's ridiculous. Shoulder pain, impingement syndrome, boundary. That's actually more than we usually get. Low back pain, fix it. That doesn't tell anything. Like, you don't have to go to your doctor, so you didn't, you didn't have to go to your physician uh, to uh, get that diagnosis. You, your patient can tell you that. So impingement syndrome is something, but what's the difference between an internal and an external impingement? Internal means inside the glenohumeral joint. That's all it means. Because if you think about it, it's a posterior impingement. I mean, people go, well, it hurts in the back, posterior impingement. That's not a thing. Okay, it's inside the glenohumeral joint. Internal. External impingement is what? Okay, what is impinged in external impingement? It's your typical rotator cuff impingement. Subacromial bursa, which is right there. So if you have a superior a external impingement, what's the humeral head doing when it shouldn't? It's going up. So if you have internal impingement, what's the humeral head doing? It's going back. Or it's not going back enough when it should. And when you're gonna see internal impingements is this, late cocking. Hey Timmy, when does it hurt when you throw? When, when does it hurt my shoulder when I throw? When? When I get to like here. Ligamentous tension rules, and this is all like, oh man, what's it called? Colton Bourne. There's a lot of study on um, you know, the real, the, tr the reality between uh, the roll, slide, glide stuff. Glenohumeral joint does not roll or slide or glide. It, stay, it centrates. It's, it's basically everything in the middle of that, everything in the shoulder is working to keep it in the middle. Now, if you want to say if it didn't do the slide, then it would go back. Yeah, fine, you can nitpick. The only joints that really do that are your DIPs and PIPs, by the way. You, you can use the rule to understand a lot of stuff, but this doesn't really work in the shoulder exactly. But if you have a posterior GH ligament tightness, where's the humor head going to go? Forward. Can you throw without pain like this? Because now I, I can feel it and I don't have it. I mean, I am running my supraspinatus into my posterior, damn, into my posterior superior labor. That's an internal impingement. But when it happens chronically, this is the way you throw, that is gonna hurt a lot. And it's gonna hurt right then. So you can say, when does it hurt? And I do this, oh, okay, yeah. So let's see what that posterior glide looks like. And then try to fix it. Um, <clears throat> another neat little thing is no, no referral patterns, guys. This I didn't get enough of in PT school. I kinda learned as I went and uh, I found that the best education I got in it was the, uh, the months of work that you do for dry needling. So if you don't even think you're gonna use dry needling, but you wanna learn anatomy in a very intimate way or referral patterns of pain, when things don't fit your special tests, this is the answer. Infraspinatus, is that the front or the back of your body? Where is the infraspinatus? It's gonna confuse a lot of people. You have bicep tendonitis. You have an anterior delt string. And I don't have to look anymore because I'm smart and I only get 10 minutes money though. I can't spend the time figuring out what's wrong. Superspinatus. Look at this, this is more on the side of you. This also gives you a little bit of like upper trap stuff. Terries, and here's the greatest one. Subscat, where's the subscat? If you had to pick front or back of your body, because really it's in the front of your scapula. That looks like posterior or internal impingement, doesn't it? Hurts when I do this. Uh. Well, this is also a eccentric, well, not eccentric, but it's a external rotation which stretches the subscapularis. And then to come back, if I'm using my arm too much, subscap's gonna pick it up. Because if I'm missing movement econ, that has to do something. The ball is coming. So if I've done here, what am I gonna do this with? Subscap. It hurts when I do this, right in the back of my arm. Well, it doesn't make sense that it should here, because the arm is actually going forward. So if it hurts when you're here and you're slow and you're accelerating the hand because you've lost movement econ down below, look at subscap. 